Hey, I'm Jay from the Cub Scouts. Welcome back to another episode of Watching Scary Animations with you guys. And we just have a conversation about it. We got a lot of good ones to go through in this episode today. So if you guys are cool with that, you're down with that. Everybody get ready and buckle up, because here we go. First video of today's episode is called The Bridge. It comes from the channel Llama Arts. I will leave the link to their channel in the description box below. But I don't know what this is going to be about. It says The Bridge, and bridges are always scary. You know, when you walk over it, when you look at it, when you smell it, when you taste it. So this story takes place when I was about 16 years old. At my school, I played for the volleyball team, and every year we would go to a camp and do volunteer work for this guy. The camp was in the middle of nowhere. When we got to the camp, we immediately started to work until 8 p.m. Losers! This was around October, so it was already dark at 8. My two friends and I were sitting around the fire, trying to figure out something we could do so we weren't so bored. We heard that there was a small river down the hill from the camp, and we thought we could check it out. What are they going to do, get naked there? Just pull off all their pants and lap each other's wieners? Problem was, is that it was some guy's property, and the owner of the camp told us to not disturb him since the guy was a little strange. Then why don't you just, uh, not disturb him? We weren't really supposed to leave the camp, but being 16 years simple? old, we loved breaking the it's rules. It's not your property, don't disturb it! We walked about 10 minutes on the camp Come on! and finally reached the river. I just drooled all over myself! It was bigger than we expected. I apologize. And there was a large wooden bridge that crossed it. Oh, yummy. The bridge was about 20 feet long and oh. was big enough to let a truck go Ooh, over big it. and thick enough? Mm -mm -mm. My two friends and I decided to go under the bridge and check it out. As okay, we trolls. Were walking by the shoreline, we saw two headlights off in the distance moving towards the bridge, so we bolted underneath it and hid. We then heard the truck roll over our heads and to the other side. My friends and I chilled there for a while, just talking and throwing rocks in the water. Making it was out. It about 8 30 at this time, and now it was pretty much pitch black. I don't know why I said That's that. When we started to hear a slow <laughs> rumble in the distance. The same truck had come back, and this time it was moving much slower. I can just imagine him under the bridge under going, the bridge, uh... stifling our laughter. Eventually, the truck moved over the bridge, but rather than going over to the other side, the truck stopped right on top of us. The only thing you could hear was the rushing water and the hum of the engine. Then, the door of the truck swung open, and out came a loud thump on top of the bridge. Then we heard a loud scream, saying, I know you're out there! I'm gonna find you! Why don't you I just look under friends, the bridge? They were both you moron! Fear. This must have been the crazy property owner, and he seemed pissed that we were on his land. He started screaming and saying he was going to hurt us if he finds us. We could see that he had a flashlight and he was swinging it around looking for us. We heard loud thumps as he walked around a little bit, calling out for us, and thank God he never went under the bridge. What a dumbass. Eventually, it They're obviously silent, under the bridge. It sounded as if he went back into his truck. I was too terrified to move. We sat there for about 10 minutes, and then my one friend, who we'll call Trevor, whispered in my ear, saying that we have to go. I gave him a quick nod, and in slow motion we moved out from under the bridge. We started to army crawl on the shoreline of the river, and I remember looking behind me to see the top of the bridge. Bro, these boys are so extra, just run! board F-150. In the driver's seat was the man, staring right at me with a sinister smile. Hey, let's get it, my guys! At that moment, I screamed and ran. My friends saw me run and took off after me. I could hear screaming from behind us. I took a quick glance behind me and saw that he was chasing after us. And I got <laughs> with the a knife in his hand. Come on, it it's always the knife. Some sort. Why can't it be like a ninja we star or something? Something and cool. Behind a bush, it was pitch black in the forest, and we couldn't hear a thing. We sat there for a while, just shaking. The man never walked by us, and we never heard him. After we gathered our courage, we got up and walked back to camp. Got Bro, come on. It's like three of you and one of him with the smallest baby dick knife that I've ever seen. Just gang up on him. Yeah, one of you guys might get stabbed, but hey, two out of three that are going to make it out alive, I'll take my chances. Got into our tents and tried to fall asleep. The next morning, we talked to the camp owner about the man that owned the property of the river. Never go in there. The camp owner said that he, he didn't know much about the man, with the but he knows that he has seen. some mental problems and he'd been accused of assault. I am so happy that we were able to escape from underneath the bridge. I can't imagine what would have happened if he caught us. 
You can't imagine what he would have done if he caught you. Um, I could have given you guys some answers. Uh, he would have killed you. He would have killed you. He would have killed you. Next video of today's episode is called True Neighbor Horror Story Animated. This is from my guy, Juan C Entertainment. Check them out. Link to their channel will be in the description box below. But there's like a little baby stroller here. So wah, wah, wah. Let's go and let's see what this is all about. Because it better be good. I laid poolside, perfecting my tan for the start of school next month. Mom was in the kitchen cooking her famous fettuccine Alfredo. Oh, fettuccine and Dad linguine, was on the way home with a movie from Redbox. My life was perfect, but everything was about to change with the arrival of a new neighbor next door. He was a former police officer, probably mid 50s, possessed a firm drill sergeant like tone, but was very friendly and talkative. Initially, he seemed He's like way too a excited for that red box for movie. Like he way was too excited. Always made an effort to wave or say hi, and the presence of someone with a law enforcement background provided a sense of security. But everything began to unravel quickly, and the catalyst seemed to be me. My neighbor Damn. took a sudden and keen interest is in how me. Neat. I went outside, I could feel his eyes examining me. He would always wander That's the detective over skills of the, his police work, I guess. But He's hiding behind he trees. But as saw my parents, he would leave. He asked me if I had any social media accounts. When I lied and said no, he asked if he could take a picture of me and proceeded to snap a pic before I could reply. I felt completely unnerved. Dog, she's like in high school and you're 50. You got like old balls. Me. Just chill out. For all I knew, that we could have a murderer or pedophile living a mere feet from our home. Obviously. Just look at I him. I knew I had to delve deeper. So one night, Bro, I the telescope, my telescope at his window. And what I saw only amplified the alarm bells going off in my head. The man was fixated on the picture of me on his phone. And I could even see a small <gasps> stack of photos on his nightstand. Ooh! A young girl's image on top. My blood ran cold, as this all but confirmed my fear. He must be a pedophile. Of the course. Next night, I saw him sneakily rummaging through our trash can. What did he I smell it? I watched in horror and disbelief as he, he was just like my used tail oh, got 14. into his car and sped off in the night. This was the final straw. I knew that in the morning, oh, I would have to look alert my parents right and get in contact with the police. <laughs> And next morning, I awoke to the sound of police sirens and a loud commotion downstairs. I hopped out of bed and saw my parents being taken away in handcuffs. What? I started screaming Were they the and crying all along? as I rushed towards the door, but I was stopped by the neighbor. With a horrified expression, he muttered, I'm so sorry. Those aren't your real parents. Oh my You're goodness! And missing the past 14 years. Oh! Test confirmed. Blood twist! Damn! Oh, that's it! Oh, that was juicy. Muttered. That was I'm juicier so than the ass on a Thanksgiving ham, bro. What a freaking plot twist for a plot twist. This was the creepiest looking 15 year old scumbag dude I ever seen in my freaking life. And then, haba, haba, ba bam! Next video of today's episode is called Creepy Bar. I don't go to too many bars in my life because I'm a sad, pathetic loser. But we're gonna see how creepy this bar actually is in this video. And it better be a creepy bar. It was on Friday night. I was finishing the last deliveries that I worked for. I was headed to the bar that I would usually go to every night to grab a glass of wine. I noticed there was a new bar that had recently opened a kilometer away from <laughs> the usual bar. Like, so I decided yeah. to try it out. When I arrived and pushed the entrance door, I noticed something very weird. Bitches? There were only five people inside and they were all dressed in Halloween costumes. Oh, I was going to say, like there was like vampire, a freaking werewolf in there. Ghost, werewolf, witch, and black magician. Black magician? I felt really uncomfortable because I was the only ordinary person there. And also because Halloween was over two days ago. That's awkward. I was still awkwardly standing there blocking the entrance when all of a sudden all the people started staring at me what the as hell if I had done something terribly wrong. I made my move and walked over to the bartender. The bartender looked almost like a real executioner. He asked me rudely in a gruff voice, 
What do you want to sacrifice? <laughs> blood or flesh? Well, that creeped the hell out of me. But I thought These this dudes was are his kinky. way They're of into taking that role a play. Halloween order of alcohol. So I requested to him, One glass of blood, please. <laughs> he turned around, grabbed a wine bottle, and poured it into a wine glass. Later, he opened a drawer and took out a black satanic pentagram necklace. He dipped the necklace three times while muttering something into my drink. Ooga. To my surprise, Ooga. the wine turned black in color. Oh, that's actually the glass cool. On the table and told me to drink it in one shot. That's a dope magic trick. I was really thirsty at that moment, so I took the glass and drank it completely. It was quite strong, and my vision was slowly starting to blur. Where is this story heading to? I paid to? the bartender and left the bar immediately. While I was walking, I started to feel dizzy, and my vision was worsening. I wasn't focused on where I was going, as my mind was in a vision of all the faces of all the people I saw in that bar, maniacally laughing and giggling at me. They weren't even that creepy, dude. All of a sudden, Mano. I had already arrived home during my vision. At first, I was relieved. But when I closed the door behind me and turned around, I knew that I was in the wrong house. It was completely abandoned. How did you get inside cold, then? gloomy, and barely lit with the rays of moonlight. I tried to open the door, but it was totally locked. Oh, well, then you're capital right F. When I was going to run into the door to break it, I heard the upper wooden ceiling was creaking as if someone was up there walking slowly, step by step. Oh, yeah, they're going to give you a spanking. I was really afraid as I had no weapon to protect myself. I tried to call 911, but had no reachable service Of course to you didn't! My only option was to go upstairs and find my way out. <laughs> go upstairs and kick his ass! I carefully walked upstairs and reached the Come on, the man, top. you got Fists of Fury? To my left was a dead end. Got that drunken to courage? to my right, I saw a hallway with three doors on each side. I opened the doors one by one to find nothing but dark, empty rooms. What does this have to do no with the way creepy to bar? Escape. Finally, when I opened the sixth door, I saw a pentagram was drawn on the floor with five candles around, touching all five corners of the star. This sent me back to where the bartender dipped a necklace with the same symbol into my drink. And there was a figure floating vertically right above the symbol below. But the light provided by the candles was not enough for me to figure out what was floating. Accidentally, I dropped my phone on the old wooden floor, which created a loud sound. The figure was slowly advancing to the my figure's direction. figure's like, oh shit, son! I quickly backed off and hit my head against the wall behind. That figure, I can't forget it. My body was completely paralyzed when I saw that the same bartender at the bar was this guy. He was still Boy. dressed as an executioner and licking faced my, lips. my powerless body. I'm licking my lips. To make matters worse, I'm smelling the doors something of funny. the empty room started opening on their smell own. That. One by one. And out came all of the five in the people air. I saw at the bar. They were all laughing at me to oh, the point they? I passed out. Oh, yeah, they were. And I heard silence. Uh-huh. Then I woke up and realized that I was in a hospital. I asked one of the nurses what was going on. She told me that a group of teenagers saw me walking out of the forest and then walking to the abandoned house. Ah, uh, sure they, they did. They tried calling out to me, but I didn't respond nor look at them. Okay. Then the group saw me entering the house, and when they tried to open the door, it was locked. And so they called 911, thinking that I was trapped in that house. Okay. 30 minutes later, the police staff arrived and broke open the door. They did, did they? found me unconscious, lying on the floor. They brought me into the hospital and were trying to investigate what had happened smell in that, that Smell that smell again, house. guys. Later, what is that? I told police officers the whole story when they came to ask. Is it... A but they didn't seem to believe me. Ugh. While some of them were laughing, smells kind of bullish. thinking that I was making it up. <laughs> smells After like poo. that, I went home and Bull directly poo. went to sleep. The next morning, I hurried to you the bathroom because I had to vomit very badly. And after I did, I noticed that my vomit was black. Oh, but to forget the things, couldn't figure I tried that out. taking a cold shower. And when I was showering, I felt a sharp sting on my back. Then, when I changed the water temperature from cold to warm, the sting started to feel even more painful. I turned back with my head, barely making it to see behind. Then I was shocked for life. I had the they same didn't see satanic that? In the hospital? When the nurse back, took off your shirt? Which was surely done by a sharp I, object. 
I'm speechless. From then on, I never went to a bar again. What's this dude creeping around the corner? You freak? But I smelled that smell, guys. You know what that smell is. Let me know down low in the comments below if you know what that smell is, because... I smell it. It smells like... You know what it smells like. Last video of today's episode is a two-for-one special. It's called Two Disturbing Horror Stories. I'm going to rub my hands together because I'm very excited for this one. So let's get it. Over the weekend, about 15 co-workers and myself had our company trip to the Stanley Hotel in Estes Park. God dang. Known for being Stephen King's inspiration for The Shining. Oh. We took an 8 p.m. ghost tour where we joined about 15 other people to get guided around the property and told stories about cool. its history and creepy things that are said to have happened why does he have to we look creepy too to take a lot of pictures i'm sure to try and he looks haunted orbs or ghosts many green orbs were caught in pictures but i don't think anything is as creepy as this photo taken by my co-worker a little girl in a hot pink dress who was definitely not on our tour that's ugly and pink that ain't hot pink years ago that's disgusting girl, to look at pink 13 by the name of that's Lucy, that pink stink was squatting in the basement of the concert hall which is where this photo was taken and she was discovered upon plans to begin some construction. She was forced to leave, and the night got below freezing. So she froze to death. Damn, did she have to die Everyone like that, though, in the ugliest way possible? This girl was not on die more tour. glamorous, will you? I mean, who wouldn't remember someone wearing hot pink? That's the not man hot pink. pictured is our tour guide. No one would have been Doo -doo in front pink. of him. I am convinced that this is the ghost of Lucy. Just Lucy one Goosey? more added note, though I doubt anyone would believe me. But there was only one time throughout the tour where I felt any strange energy or feeling. And it was right there, headed down to the basement of the concert hall. What? That was it? What? <laughs> What is this? This happened a few weeks ago when I was walking home from school, excited that my freshman year was coming to an end. It was a Tuesday night when I was turning in my last essay for history. I left it to the last minute and the teacher actually made me complete it before I could go home. Oh, what a I dick. I my teacher for that. Teachers doing their jobs. Around Shame 8 p.m., I had finished that goddamn essay and was walking home. The rain had stopped and there was a beautiful sunset. Suddenly, I noticed something. There was a red 2016 Toyota Camry right behind me. I got goosebumps thinking it was following me. I didn't look back and started walking in my apartment's direction. I wanted to go to a busy road to feel safer. Just then, the car sped up, stopping right next to me. Ooh. A middle-aged man asked me where I was headed and suggested to drop me off. I said no thanks, but the man Why would he go out of his way to do that? Insisted. I wanted to tell the man to just fuck off, but I took off running instead. That's I heard a good a idea. Loud noise, and at the same time, felt something I can only describe as a sharp vibration hitting my flesh. I fell to the ground, not knowing what happened. Out of adrenaline, I was about to get up and run again as I felt a heavy arm grab me by the mouth. Did he get shot? Then the pain set in. I realized that I was shot. Oh! There was another man next to him that searched my pockets. He grabbed my phone and threw it on the ground as he tied my legs and taped my mouth. They quickly put me into the trunk of their car and then started driving. Why would they shoot this kid? I feel that we were going very fast. This kid ain't worth nothing. I'm sure that we hadn't stopped at all for a good 30 minutes. I was feeling my blood soaking into my shirt, which scared me the most. I was certain that I was going to die. I was thinking about my parents and what they would feel when they heard. Oh, whoops. My bad. I was thinking how terrifying that must be, and then, then my the car came slipped. to a stop. By some miracle, I heard a police officer asking for IDs and driver's licenses. Sweet. I wanted to yell for help, but nothing came out. Just then, I heard three to four gunshots. I heard another cop yelling. Man down! Man down! Shots fired! I was begging the cop to find me. Then I heard the cop searching the car. I was feeling joy as my pain was growing worse. Seconds felt like hours. The officer then opened the car's trunk and suddenly started oh! firing at me out of a fight or flight response. What the heck? Thankfully, the bullets missed. Yeah, thankfully he was the dog shit at aiming. caught up to the fact that I was kidnapped and injured. He called for backup immediately, and it arrived in minutes. 
They placed the injured officer onto a gurney and drove off in an ambulance. Finally, when the scene was safe, they called another ambulance for me. I woke up in the hospital. The news media was everywhere. I was fine after a few days, but later learned that the officer that was shot didn't make it. I don't know if those men are still alive or rotting away in a prison for killing an officer. I don't want to know what would have happened if those officers hadn't stopped the car. All right, guys, well, that's going to do it for this episode of Reacting to Scary Animations with you guys. If you want to see more videos of this series, make sure you guys give this video one big fat like. And tell a friend today that Jay from the Cub Scouts is that dude!